This is Jennifer Aniston and this is a fat busting machine that she claimed helped her shape her body. It's called a cryolipolysis machine. Hmm. Cryolipolysis, big word, big word. Cryo meaning cold, lipo meaning fat, and lysis meaning the breakdown of something. So basically, the breakdown of fat with cold therapy. The idea of cosmetic body sculpting really intrigues me. Now I've always stood firmly by the statement that to get in good shape, you have to eat healthy and exercise regularly. But celebrities with tons of money in the bank seem to disagree with me. So today's question should actually be, does it really take hard work to get in good shape or are we just too poor to look good? That's why in today's video, we're scientifically diving into whether fat freezing can help you sculpt away those love handles and get you the thigh gap you think you want or not. Let me start by telling you something crazy. Did you know that the cosmetic surgery industry is worth $70 billion and is projected to be worth $200 billion by the end of 2023? Let me put that into perspective for you. That means with that money, you can buy 67,619 private islands in the Caribbean. And if due to some natural events happening, you might even get those islands on special and be able to put a McLaren on every single one of them. Ridiculous. And you can do this every single year. What? If you think about cosmetic modification psychologically, it kind of makes sense. We as humans always want the easy way out. We want a fast effortless way to get food, so we buy pre-made meals. We don't want to put in months of hard work at the gym and spend countless hours in the kitchen making weight loss appropriate meals, so we opt for weight loss pills and try junk detoxes. The honest truth is, due to years of media manipulation and our current social environment, we're almost never satisfied with the way we look. And that's the reason why this mega industry just keeps on growing and growing and growing. Cryolipolysis or fat freezing has been around for many years in the medical sphere, but only recently started hitting the media for its body sculpting capabilities. Very few people, however, actually know how cryotherapy works and all of the side effects that comes along with it. So. Let's start off with how this procedure is actually done. The procedure can be performed in either a doctor's office or an outpatient clinic. The size and shape of the fatty deposits are measured and the treatment area is marked with a skin marking pencil. During the procedure, patients are awake. A handheld applicator device is used to freeze the layer of fat cells, called adipocytes, beneath the skin. To begin, a gel pad is applied to the affected area to protect the skin. The fatty bulge is then suctioned or vacuumed into the applicator's wide opening. Patients usually feel a tugging or pulling sensation. These sensations, along with others such as tingling, stinging, aching and cramping, fade after 5-10 to 10 minutes, as the area becomes numb during the cooling process. The fat layer underneath the skin is then gradually cooled to a temperature range of minus 1 to 4 degrees Celsius. Area treatment usually takes less than an hour and after the applicator is removed, a treatment facilitator will usually massage the area for two to three minutes, which apparently aids in the breakdown of fat cells. Scientifically, we always have to err on the side of caution when it comes to magic fat loss treatments. It's claimed that this fat freezing method is based on a finding that fat cells are more vulnerable to cold than normal cells, such as skin cells, for example which is something I'm sure you're also interested to find out. Now, if your brain works anything like mine, I'm sure you've been thinking, if cold can damage fat cells, they can also damage skin cells, which would defeat the purpose. Apparently not. They say cold only damages fat cells. So this injury caused to the fat cells due to the cold treatment basically forces the body to react with the inflammatory response. This is how the body heals itself. Macrophages, a type of white blood cell that is part of the body's immune system, are called to the injury site. They remove the dead fat cells and debris. Theoretically, this is something that would happen if the damage was enough for the body to decide that it would be better to recycle the fat cell than to repair it. Moving on, 
You may be wondering how long does it take to see results? These people's research says that it takes about four months after the initial treatment to start seeing results. And they showed that an average of 15 to 28% of fat reduction can be expected. Sounds pretty promising. Let's talk side effects. The known side effects are apparently only temporary and include pains or aches, stinging or tingling of the skin, redness, swelling, skin discoloration or bruising, and even skin sensitivity or numbness. Side effects can last anywhere from a few days to weeks after the treatment. Now to be fair, that doesn't sound too bad. Some things to note, however. The procedure is only recommended for people who are in good general health, have no neurological or orthopedic issues, and want spot fat reduction in specific areas of the body. So it's not a whole body fat loss technique. It sounds like it's basically for people who chase a thigh gap or have a little bit of love handles to deal with. Cryolipolysis is not recommended for obese people and the reason for this basically is there is a big chance that the skin surface will be irregular or uneven after the healing process has taken place. It might even leave you with quite severe cellulite deformities if the healing of these cells take place in an irregular pattern, which it sometimes does. Healing of fat cells can take longer or shorter than we actually think and that's why they usually say that you should wait six to eight weeks if you need another session after the first one has been done. Basically it comes down to it's not an immediate effect type of thing. I'm careful to give this treatment a green light purely based on two things. One, fat cells are funny things. If you eat too much food and use too little energy, fat will be stored whether you like it or not. And the unsettling part of this is if those fat cells that you just deleted aren't there anymore, the body will just store the fat somewhere else, which might be even less appealing. A condition known as paradoxical adipose hyperplasia can also occur. What happens in this condition is basically the fat cell can turn on you and increase in size as a result of the trauma. So that's one reason I would be hesitant to give this treatment the green light. And reason two, well, research papers on this topic is ridiculously untrustworthy. One very popular and often cited paper is a open source paper, meaning anybody could have published it without having it validated or assessed at all. And it's only been peer reviewed once, and it could have been the author himself as well. We wouldn't know. What makes it even more dodgy is that the author of this paper works for a clinic that does cosmetic work conflict of interest much? It's like the sugar industry doing research on sugar and showing that it can heal cancer. I mean, come on. Anyways. Overall, cryotherapy brings its own concerns and benefits, like all of these quick fat loss techniques. If you want to get in good shape, I always tell my clients, high protein, low carb diet is the best. Calorie deficit, consistently. That's how you get there. For all of you health and fitness investigator viewers, I hope you enjoyed the scientific deep dive into this topic. If you did, subscribe button below. It would be really cool if you could click it now. Thanks. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video. As always, Mondays, sometimes Wednesdays, even Fridays. All right, cheers. Bye. Remember to read your research papers properly. Don't just blatantly trust blogs and research papers on open source websites. Come on, man. Where's the scientist in you? Okay, bye.